Hi everyone. Well, we're uh, we're back at it, and today we're, it's exciting because we're going to tackle one of the major issues that this bike has, which is for those that have been following along, is a wet something issue. Immense columns of foul smoke belch miles into the sky. So today uh, we've got all the parts, and uh, we are going to uh, install a new oil pump uh, on the engine. So that's what we're going to do uh, today. Uh, at least we're going to get it started today. And uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of an exciting thing. I'm excited because really this is the last thing that I need to do before I actually get on the bike and uh, ride it, which I'm excited to do, frankly. So um, yeah, let me go to show you the parts that I've got here. So um, yeah, so the uh, here's the oil pump that I've got. It's a Morgo oil pump. And then, you know, looking around online at various forums there's general consensus that this is the best oil pump for this bike so I picked that up and then I've also got a uh, advanced and retired extraction tool for taking off the uh, advanced unit which is underneath the points and, uh, that's not that are on the bike and we've got a new gasket for our cover and we also have a few little bits and bobs including a new seal that we're going to install so that's uh, that's what we got going on here, and uh, yeah. So you know what? Without uh, talking too much more, let's uh, let's start out, start start on the job, and uh, let's get after it. Alrighty. So uh, our our oil pump is right about there inside here. So the very first thing we need to do is take our points cover off. So we'll do that, and then what we're gonna do once we get this cover off is we're then going to try to carefully mark where the timing plate is currently sitting so that we can hopefully assemble it back roughly in the same spot so our timing isn't amazingly out from where it is right now. We've got a gasket right there that we need to retain and keep. Put that in our parts tray. And uh, these are the two retaining nuts. They're sort of long long uh, hexagonal, <laughs> I guess they're hexagonal, retaining nuts. So that's what we need to take off. But before we do that, I actually want to mark the plate uh, in such a way that I can see where it is located. And I'm, I'm planning on using a blue Sharpie, not black, because, you know, everything is, gets black and oily. So I'm going to try to use a blue one and mark that up. So I need to get a little bit more light on this. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I've uh, I've got a light shining on uh, on the points there, on the points and the backing plates, so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to make a couple of marks here, so I can see where we have this set. So I've got that marked in a few spots there. And uh, yeah, and then what we're going to do now, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a tool and we're going to take, take it off. Okay guys, so uh, now we can, we can take these nuts off of here. Oh, they're on there tight. They are on there tight. Okay, we're going to use a small socket on this. Okay, so uh, we've got a quarter inch socket, so we're just going to crack these. That goes really easy when you've got the right tool. There we go. So we're just going to take these right off. Here's one, and you can see they've got a uh, sort of a washer or a spacer on the bottom of them. So we'll remember that. There's the other one. Actually, it's actually two separate washers that are on there. Two separate washers, okay, on each one. Um, okay, so now we should be able to just pull our backing plate off. Oh, oh, you know what we need to do? We need to take this off as well. So that's the next thing, we need to take that off. Okay, so uh, now we're going to take the, uh, the bolt off here at 7 sixteenths. And that's just on there snugly, wasn't super tight. And that should allow us to take the whole mechanism off. Here we go. Now she's coming. Alrighty. 
So there is our points and uh, backing and backing plates. So now I think probably what we want to do is uh, just take these wires off. So we're going to remember where those are and take those off. So we're going to get a small little socket here and uh, get those off of there. That is our uh, our timing advance back there. We have a special tool to take that off. And we can see our blue marks for our timing when we put this back together again. So, um, yeah, so that's good. Alrighty, so the next step here, guys, is to actually take the wires off of here. So... Um, it's just good to make note that the wires actually go underneath the uh, plastic or nylon washer. So it's, a, it's again, it's a quarter inch socket. And interestingly, I didn't even need to put it onto the socket to actually loosen this off. So again, really important to keep these parts, have a magnetic parts tray and then take the washer off. And then we can take our wire off like that remembering where that particular black and white wire goes, okay? Interestingly, this is our top, okay? Because this sort of spins around and goes on. This is our top, and this is going to be on, uh, when it's facing this direction, on the left side. So that's that one. Now let's do this one. Good to know that these wires actually go down. You'll notice that they've got a, got a clip here, and it actually hooks around the, uh, the actual points when they go on. So when they go on, they go on such that they're right in between uh, those two point two uh, areas going down on the uh, on the spring that's holding the points. So that's that off of there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put these back on. And we're going to set that aside until we reassemble the unit. So that's that off. Okay, so now the next bit is to get our... A timing advance unit off of there um, and that is going to be the next bit so that needs to pull out uh, out of that uh, out of the unit there so we've got a special tool to do that we'll do that next okay guys so now the next thing we need to do is take our timing advance off of here and so there's a few different ways of doing this there's a lot of guys you can make up your own tool to do this but I chose to buy the proper tool for it rightly or wrongly because I was buying other stuff at the same time and it wasn't a big deal so Basically, you just thread this in there until it bottoms out, and then you just give it a bit of a turn, and that should loosen it off sufficiently to pop that right out of there. That's the theory, anyways. And there she is. Look at that. That was very simple. I'm uh, quite happy I have that tool. Actually, that was uh, ridiculously easy. So uh, now that we have that off, uh, we have the points off and our backing plate off. Now what we can do is take the series of screws off here. This one looks like it has the original Phillips head screws on there. So we're going to be very careful taking these out. Um, uh, they do look in really good shape. So if they remain in good shape, we'll probably put those back in there. If not, we may replace those with, uh, with hex heads, uh, etc. But for now, the next bit is take this cover off. Okay, so now we're going to try start taking the uh, the Phillips screws out. So we'll just that one. This one I'd already pre loosened off, so they're not actually that loose. This one I had not. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. That one's coming. It's really important to have a good, you know, a, a screwdriver that fits. I actually had to hunt around to find one. It's actually a surprisingly large screwdriver that you need to get these off. Okay, that's coming. Now, I should also mention that uh, I have drained the oil. In fact, I'm doing this as part of a whole oil change in the system. I just thought it would make sense to, you know, putting a brand new oil pump on to actually have perfectly fresh oil. So I have drained the crankcase. I've drained the primary. Um, I've drained the oil tank, of course, the crankcase. All of, all, the whole thing is drained of oil. Um, I think you can, because it's a dry sump engine, I'm pretty sure you can do this job without too much issue by just taking this cover off and you're not going to lose a ton of oil. That said, I'm not so sure because when you take that oil pump off, I believe there's a check valve in there that keeps the oil from draining out of the uh, tank. So anyways, um, I've drained all the oil out of this. I suggest you do too. If you're putting a new oil pump in, it just makes sense to use fresh oil afterwards, I'm thinking. So 
There you go. Yeah, these are on there, not so bad, which is a relief. I will do likewise when I put them back on. Okay, almost spoke too soon there. That one was kind of tight. And it looks like we got one more to go here. Do we? Yeah, one more to go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we didn't have to fight with those too much. Didn't have to get the impact driver out or anything. That's not too bad. Okay, so now we need to get this off. And uh, there is a pounding area here. The case is purposely a little bit high right there. Uh, not so much here or here, but there's a pounding area that you can get at to kind of get this. Now, obviously, you don't want to use anything metal or mar this up anyway. So you have to be careful to get that off. So I'm going to find something that is suitable that we can get in there probably from the other side and gives us a couple of uh, gentle wax and persuasion so uh, that'll be the next bit okay guys well i went and uh had these out in my workshop to uh that i thought would be good for hammering this edge here but unfortunately they're not long enough to get uh to get to get from the other side so uh what i looked around for is i found a couple pieces of wood so i'm gonna try this one first and see what we can do with that so i'm just gonna go to the other side here and see if we can pick up that lip a little bit there and give it a little bit of a whack with the rubber band. Did that start doing something? Yeah, you know, I think it might be actually. It's kind of funny they don't have a pounding point on the other side as well. Okay, so let's give it a little bit of a wiggle here. And there she comes. There she comes. Okay, we gotta be careful with these wires here. See how that's working. Just pulling those through best I can. But yeah, that's, uh, that worked out really well. It came off a lot easier than I had imagined that it would. It doesn't look like it's gonna let us get those all the way out. We're gonna deal with that separately. There are a couple of seals here that we're gonna take a look at, and uh, yeah, but uh, maybe we can do that just while it's on the bike, we'll see. But there is our offending oil pump. So that is a good piece of work for today. And actually, interesting, we still got a bit of, bit of oil out of this, even though the engine is entirely drained. Obviously, it just catches in the bottom there, I guess. So, uh, yeah, so that's good. So then the next bit is going to be, I think, probably change out the oil pump itself. And then we're going to have to look at the seals. So that is coming up next. Okay, guys. So um, unfortunately, I thought I was filming and wasn't. Um, but I did replace the seal here. There's a snap ring in here. It's a very simple snap ring. Um, I pried it out with a screwdriver. And then I pounded it back in. Um, just on the bike here. Just put on the brake pedal. And I used a, uh, a socket that was just the perfect size. What size is this? 18 millimeter socket to just uh, drive the, uh, you know, drive the seal in there um, and then put the snap ring back in place. So sorry, I, I thought I was filming and I didn't. So anyways, that's what I did there just in preparation for putting this back together again. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying not to actually remove the wires here, as you can tell. And the reason for that is because the it almost looks like factory crimped ends on the ends of these wires and I really would hate to cut them and cutting them would be the only way to get them off and then I'd have to replace them. So it's actually one of the reasons I did the seal first too because if I couldn't have easily done the seal, which I easily did, if I couldn't have easily done the seal, I would not have, then I would have cut it and put it on the bench. But as it turns out, it was very easy on this bike. On yours might be different. Uh, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, take the pump off itself. So uh, I'm using a uh, 7 16 wrench here, and we're just going to give her a go. 
I'm trying to feel how tight this is as well. I know they say five foot pounds, but frankly, I'm going to do this by feel when I put it back together again. So I don't, I'm just trying to feel how tight they are currently. And they're actually, yeah, they're not tight. I can tell you that five foot pounds is much. Um, when I put them back on, I might put them on a little tighter than that. We're going to put this. Yeah, okay, get a sense of that there. Okay, and again, we're just going to be really cautious that we don't lose these parts anywhere. Although I think, I believe the kit came with new, uh, with new nuts. But just the same, we're going to try not to lose them. There's a, a washer and a nut there. We're putting that in our tray. Uh, it looks like I need to give this one a little bit more as well. There we go. They actually say on reassembly to use a little bit of thread locker. So the Morgo kit I got to put a little thread locker on these when you reassemble it. So I'm, uh, I looked, I don't have any. I'm gonna run down and pick some up after I get, I thought I'd take this off first and look at it. So now we just need to take the pump off. And I have to give this a little bit of encouragement. Oh, there we go. That's the key when you're doing this pry it at the very bottom, not, not anywhere near the top. So there she's starting to come for us now. Okay, great. Just about have it. Okay. There we go. And there is our oil pump. The one that we're replacing and there's definitely something going on with the gasket material here it seems like there's oil around here and not a lot of oil around here don't know why or what that matters at all frankly don't know don't care just gonna put a new pump on there so that's essentially what we're gonna do with that um, so that is pretty much it for right now. I'm going to go and take this and clean this up. I'm going to, you can see there's some gasket material stuck on here as well. I'm going to clean all of that up. And then when I come back, we will put the new pump on with the new gasket and uh, take it from there. So that's going to be next. Okay, so uh, we're at the stage now where we're going to put the new pump on. So the first thing, of course, is to uh, you know put the gasket on there. So we're gonna do that. This is part of the old pump here. So this is gonna come off. Um, and we'll put the gasket on. Now it's really critical you get the gasket on there the right way around. So I'm gonna make sure that I do that. So there's two holes here and there's a slot here. So this definitely goes on like this. I've also val validated that on the pump side as well, but I've got it lined up there correctly. I'm just gonna carefully slide this on without ripping it. Have a look at it, make sure, sure enough, we have our two holes in the slot. All the holes are free. So it's perfect. We look at the pump and we can see those same two holes are here. They're gonna line up perfectly with this. So we know we've got all that good. It's important to be a little bit, um, a little bit careful at this stage. Ah, we got it. We got it. Okay, that was simple. We've got that on there nicely. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to put a little bit of thread locker on here and then we'll put the uh, nuts and washers on. So let's grab the thread locker here. And uh, I'm just using a medium strength, the Permatex uh, medium blue uh, thread locker is what I'm using. And this is on the guidance of the Morgo people. This is what they suggest you do. That was probably too much. Yeah, I think that was too much. I'm sorry, I'm not. That's a little runnier than I'd expected. 
That looks like about the right amount to me there. Okay, then we're going to put our washers on. These are a special convex washer with the convex side in. And then our special nuts. Now I'm not reusing the nuts from the previous kit. I'm using the ones that Morgo supplied. Okay. I'll put a little more on that. I want to make sure I'm right on the end here where the nut is with that thread locker. I want to make sure this stuff works. How does this one look? Yeah. Of course I dropped that, that's okay. I'm gonna put a little more thread locker on there. Yeah, it's too much, that's okay. We'll wipe a little bit off. Put our washer back on that we just knocked off. Okay, we'll stop playing with it and actually put it together, right? Eh? These don't get tightened down ridiculously tight, so we're not going to get overly carried away with it. I think we're pretty much there. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there. I think that's good. So, yeah. Okay, that's really good. I think we've got that on there quite well. So now the next bit is to put our case back on. Now, um, the kit came with uh, this seal here. It did not come with this one, interestingly. But you know what? Luckily for me, this seal looks really good. So I don't have any issues with that. So now it's just a matter of us putting it back on. Um, now what we're going to do is, uh, uh, when I took this off, interestingly, there was no gasket on here on either side. Um, what they would used, I believe, was, uh, was uh, an anaerobic. Uh, gasket sealer and I've decided to go and use exactly the same not exactly the same product but the same idea and use an anaerobic uh, seal on here instead of a gasket um, rightly or wrongly that's what I've decided to do so um, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of that onto uh, the surfaces here and uh, then we will button it up yeah okay I'll bring you back when we do that Okay guys, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna put some sealant on here. You know, I've been kind of debating, should I use a gasket, shouldn't I? Because they did send a gasket for us. Ah, well maybe I'll look at it. So I opened it up out of the package and you know what? The uh, gasket they sent me is uh, cut. <laughs> so makes a decision for me. So we're gonna use an anaerobic um, gasket sealer on here instead. Um, and uh, the way these work is these stay flexible when they're exposed to air and only harden up when there's no air. So that's how that, that's how these gasket sealants work and they work really well. I've only used them a few times before, but it does work uh, super well. And actually when I look online for this, you know, for these bikes, a lot of guys are using this purposely anyways. Well, if not this product and something very similar to it. So um, yeah, we'll see how this works. I'm going to just fast forward through all of this so you can see, you don't have to watch me putting gasket sealer everywhere. But uh, that's what we're doing. And then we'll button it up. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm putting a little bit of silicone on the um, 
on the seal for uh, that was going to go into the, uh, the the cover here so that we hopefully don't get an oil leak so that's what i'm doing there i'm not using the anaerobic stuff because the anaerobic stuff only seals up under pressure and so we're not going to pressure this so just using a tiny little bit of gas of traditional silicone sealer on our uh, seal for the uh, for the wires. Okay, so let's uh, place this on there. Let's, this is the next bit. This is the exciting bit. So I'm just you can't see this, but I'm pushing the seal for the wires into the case, getting that in there nice and flush. So I've got that in there, and now I'm just going to get the stuff off of my hands. I have a lot of it on my hands. Okay. And there we go. Now all we need to do is seal her up. We can thread that through a little more. And what's great, now we can actually see that little bit of blue silicone coming through there which is good because we're sealing it on that side not on this side we want to keep the keep all of the uh, oil in there so uh, yeah so now what we'll do is we'll start sealing it up with our with our screws so we're just gonna do this like you would uh, a head or anything else we're just gonna put them around in random sort of order here to make sure we're not torquing the uh, the uh, the cover in any which way. Okay, so we're just snugging up those bolts. Okay, you know what? I'm really happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, mineral spirits or something like that and just clean all of this excess uh, stuff, all of this excess gasket material off of the case because we don't want that on there, do we? Uh, you don't need to watch me do that. Uh, after we do that, we're then going to go and, of course, put our, uh, you know, our point, our uh, timing advance in our you know our points plate and our points back in and get it all back set up again so that's next okay guys uh before we actually put our points in we're gonna put our timing advance in make sure we get into the hole there there's a there's a cutout here or a little notch that goes into the pin back there so we got to make sure we get that in there double check it here yeah, that's where we need it, right there. And then we're going to put our 7 16th inch bolt in there to hold that in place. This was not terribly tight before, so... I don't want to turn the engine over. It's good enough. Yeah, it's definitely tight on there. Good. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, timing advance in there well, now what we're going to do is put the points in. And if you recall, um, we've got top labeled on here, so we know it goes around this way. The other thing I'm going to mention is, is it wasn't, I have to admit, it wasn't terribly obvious to me, is that there, although there's no notch for the wires in the backing plate here, what there is, is in the case, there's a very subtle very very subtle notch right here uh, in the uh, in the actual uh, cover or uh, timing case cover itself and so the wires must be laid right there right in that little area although there's not a notch on the outside it needs to be laid like that so that you can get the timing uh, or the points backing plate here actually in there so what we want to do is we know this is our top so we want to just kind of make sure our wires in the right spot and then starting at the bottom so that we're pushing the wires down into that spot first then go and place the uh, backing plate in there and that is how it goes in the easiest um yeah so i think i have that completely spinned wrong but that's all right that gives us an idea of where we need to be 
So, uh, so that's good for that. Now, if you recall as well, I made a couple of marks with a uh, Sharpie uh, exactly where this backing plate was spun before. So we're going to go and look for those marks and then we're going to put our uh, secure it down uh, with our bolts and our two washers. So that's going to be the next step. Okay guys, I've got it roughly lined up where the uh, where those marks are that I made with the Sharpie before we took it apart. And I'm just going to put the the, uh, the mounting, like we call these bolts, I think we'll call them bolts, say, eh? uh, the mounting fixtures in roughly where they go, just finger tight. And then we're going to have another look. And before we snug it down, accurately make sure that we have those marks set up correctly. So I'm just having a look here. Unfortunately, I can't show you this, but you know, if you do this yourself, I, you know, you can take the same approach. Okay, guys. Now that we're happy with where the points are, now we're just going to snug these up a bit. These don't need to be terribly tight, but tight enough. Especially using the tool I'm using here, we don't want to over tighten it. So that's good enough for now. So now the next thing to do is actually go and obviously put our wires back on. So that'll be the next steps. Our uh, black wire with yellow stripe goes over here. And if you recall, it's got a little uh, notch here on the, uh, on the uh, what would you call it? The little uh, bracket or what have you on the end of the wire. It goes and straddles the... Uh, the actual spring for the points so we need to make sure we get that on there like that then we put our uh, washer on in fact, maybe the washer can go on there easier like that make sure that's connected correctly pushed on like that and then secured with a nut again well, don't drop it these are really really tiny so of course I dropped it shit well, that's not very good. Let's have a hunt. All right, we're back. Hey, I found the little nut, and I've put my little uh, my magnetic parts tray underneath this thing. So if I drop it again, hopefully it falls in the magnetic parts tray. Uh, yeah, because I'm not sure I'm going to get lucky twice if I drop this again. So uh, there we go. Okay, we'll tighten that up in a minute, but it is on there, the first one. So now we're going to do the same with the black wire. I probably should have rooted this black wire a little bit differently, so we're going to do that now. Okay, uh, again we'll put our washer on. And then we're going to make sure that our, uh, again, our little clip here is straddling the spring. That's what it's supposed to be doing. So. That one wants to spring right off, so we we'll have to be careful with that. Yeah, that's where she goes. We'll grab our little nut. Still got our parts, magnetic parts tray. Oh, and it caught it. Luckily enough, the parts tray caught it. Thank you. Try that again. All right. Try not to be a fumble fingers here again. Alrighty, okay, so she is back on there and back in approximately the right place. We are gonna have to, of course, retime the engine, but this should be good enough to get it started. So that's kind of the game plan. Um, fingers crossed, I guess we'll find out. So the next thing we wanna do is <laughs> the most obvious thing and that's put oil back in this thing because at the moment she doesn't have oil in it anywhere. We, of course, drain the oil from the main tank. We drain the oil from the primary. We drain the oil from the sump. Uh, we replace the oil filter, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we wanna go and put all new fresh oil in this and that will be the next step. Okay, so uh, we, first thing we're gonna do is fill the sump up with oil and it uh, takes five eighths of, uh, of an imperial pint, very important, imperial pint, um, or about, in rough numbers, 350 milliliters of oil into the sump. And the first thing you want to do is clean the heck out of this area before you take that sump bolt out. Um, 
because you don't want to get any gunk into the engine off from here. So that's the way to do that. So, and as you can appreciate, getting oil into this area is not terribly, oh, my fingers are all oily now. I wonder why. Um, is not terribly easy. So there's a couple ways of doing it. Some guys will use uh, a big syringe. I don't have a big syringe, or I'd probably do that too, but I do have a funnel and a piece of tubing. So that is the right, the right size, and frankly, I can't remember what size it is, but this happens to be exactly the right size tubing. So I'll stick that in there, and I'll just go and show you what I'm doing here. Okay, and uh, we'll just put the oil in there. And again, 350 milliliters of oil is what we're what we're doing here. So let's just put that in. It's going to take a little bit of time here, <laughs> but uh, this does work. And then what I'll do while this is draining in, I'll go have a coffee or you know. Maybe even a cup of tea. You never know. But uh, I'm going to go and uh, have, uh, once I pour this into the funnel, oh, can't overfill that funnel here. So I've just got to wait. I'll probably fast forward through this, but you get the idea. Um, there's probably better, faster ways of doing this, but this is what works for me. I just tie the funnel up with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of wire so it can just hang there. Um, probably would be better to have a shorter piece of tubing, but I frankly might use this tubing for something else, and that's the length I had. I didn't really feel like cutting it, so yeah, so that's why I'm using a longer piece just so that I am preserving it a little bit for other jobs that I might need to do. But you can do whatever you want to do. The bottom line is you want to get the oil in there, and you don't want to make a big mess. And as you can see, um, well, I'm not sure you can see, but, uh, but yeah, bottom line is it's going in there quite nicely quite nicely so yeah so okay I will uh, I'll bring you back after I get this job uh, after I get this job done okay while the oil is draining into the sump and of course as a reminder that's five-eighths of a pint into the sump or about 350 360 milliliters thereabouts um, while that's going and doing its business we're going to go and uh, put uh, the oil into the primary here and in the primary we are going to put uh, 150 milliliters of oil into the primary. So let's do that next. I've got it measured out here. So uh, yeah, about 150 mils, something like that. Okay, uh, and we're going to dump that into into here. Just get all of that in there. Now apparently uh, between the between the uh, the sump I guess that the sump area and the primary area there are actually some drain holes. They do use the same oil in this bike. Now some Triumphs that's not the case, and some Triumphs uh, they are a separate unit um, as pre-unit. <laughs> this is a unit construction, but uh, the pre-units I think are different. Don't quote me on that, but uh, this one does use the same oil as uh, you know as the rest of the bike some of the other bikes uh, will actually use gear oil in the primary case what I'm using and maybe I'll just show you now is I am using uh, Castrol uh, 2050 motorcycle oil okay um, I use this in my other bikes I use it in uh, that bike too um, but uh, that's what we're using in uh, you know in this bike and I've I'm basing that on what a lot of other people have said online as to that 2050 is the uh, the right oil to use uh, in this bike so um, so yeah so now the next thing we want to do is actually go and put 2.2 uh, liters of oil into uh, you know into the frame of the bike or in you know the oil tank the main oil tank so that's what we're gonna do next there's our there's our dipstick, so I don't think you need to see me do that. I'm just going to put 2.27 liters, call it 2.2-ish liters of oil into the tank. Um, and then we're going to start spinning the engine over and see how, uh, see how it goes. Okay, well, we're just uh, draining the second liter of, uh, of oil into the, uh, into the main tank. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm, it calls for 2.27 liters of oil. Uh, in the main tank, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, just check the level 
after putting two in and just see what it looks like. Um, this this particular bike as well also has an aftermarket uh, sort of uh, non-standard oil filter. As you can see, it's got the oil filter mod on it, which is awesome. So it's got a proper screw on oil filters. So, you know, that I think possibly that tank's going to be pretty full until we get some oil into the oil filter, which uh, so I think maybe the process might be to just check it now, make sure we're not overfilling the darn thing and then uh, running it very briefly and then uh, checking the oil again and then just topping it up exactly where it needs to be. We're only talking a quarter liter of oil difference. So yeah, I think that's probably the right process. This is my first time doing it on this bike, so we're, <laughs> we're, we're learning as we go. So, but I think that makes, uh, that makes sense to me anyways. So uh, yeah, so we'll just let this thing drain and then we'll uh, button it all up, uh, put the caps on everything, um, uh, bolt up the sump, bolt up the primary, you know, chuck it with our dipstick and then we will go from there. Okay, so that uh, two liters of oil has drained into the tank and so now what we're going to do is we're just going to check the dipstick here and see what we have and hopefully you can see this I uh, don't know if you can but we've got oil right to about there and that is lots for right now so uh, again what we're going to do is we're going to um, start the bike I, I suspect it's going to need a little bit more well in fact I'm sure it's going to need a little bit more uh, but I don't want to get too carried away with it um, and uh, because I know that the oil filter is empty at least i'm assuming it's empty i'm not sure it would fill from the tank as we're pouring the oil and maybe it does i don't really know bottom line it's well into the safe zone right now as it is uh so we're just going to fire the bike up we won't let it run for more than a minute that's probably max probably less than that just enough to get oil circulating the other thing of course we want to do i mean obviously the whole purpose of this job was to change the oil pump so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking in here when the bike is running looking inside the cap here to see the oil returning from the oil pump and we definitely want to see that pretty quickly so that's going to be job one um, and then once we're sure that the oil is returning back to the tank and we run it for about a minute, then we're gonna turn it off and uh, let it settle uh, and uh, recheck our, uh, our levels on things. So that's what the plan is here. Okay guys, we started her up and we've got success. It took a while for the oil to come start coming. It actually freaked me out. I turned the bike off because after about 20 seconds, there was still no oil, but you know what? She's working great now. See that oil coming in there? So our oil pump is working fine, so that's, uh, yeah, that's good news, that is really good news, so, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled, and obviously the bike is running too, it's even idling, so, uh, yeah, very happy with that, so we'll see if that cures our wet sumping problem, uh, but so far so good, we're gonna let the bike just run another minute or two here. Uh, I know I said it was going to run at last, but I'll let it run for a minute a little bit and then we'll uh, let it settle. I'll go out with another cup of coffee, we'll check the oil and then uh, top it up. But you know what, I'm going to call this job done. Pretty happy with it. Okay guys, well look, that wraps up this video. Um, it was uh, a real fun job to go and actually change out that oil pump and uh, to hopefully solve my wet sumping issue. Um, you know, because I'm a brand new Triumph owner, although this is an old bike, you know, I needed some good guidance on what to do. And uh, a number of guys on the Triumph forum uh, gave me some really good advice and guidance, especially Joe and Iron. You guys know who you are. Uh, really appreciate the uh, guidance on even pointing me in the direction of the oil pump and the uh, the lower seal as well. Uh, that potentially could be the issue and of course we changed out both of those in this job so uh, I just want to thank those guys very much and as well um, just uh, for those of you that may have enjoyed this video or, or liked the video if you could uh, please subscribe I would really appreciate it in a big way and of course like the video and leave me a comment you know I am just learning so I'm sure I'm doing a few things that are wrong or unnecessary or 
or maybe there's a better way of doing things, um, you guys know. So let me know. But leave me a comment and uh, let me know. Um, I, I'm, I'm here. I, I, I love to learn and I love all the comments. So, um, yeah, anyways, I hope everybody is having... Uh, oh, one other thing I should mention about the comments is I reply to every comment. So if you send me a note, I will commit to to writing back to you, okay? So uh, anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Um, have a uh, great rest of the day, and we will catch you on the next one.